In January 2006, a man named Ricky Meji was stranded for 71 days in the Tanami Desert on northern Australia, with no food, water, even a shoes. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, in this video, we will talk about, the man who survived in the most extreme hot place in the morning and so cold at the night, for 71 days, but before we continue, please help me to reach 100 subscribers before the end of July, and also leave a comment, as I mentioned, I'll post every single day, so without further ado, let's get started. Ricky Meji was born in Gippsland, Victoria. He later described his childhood as a happy one, until the family moved to Melbourne, where his father later killed himself. Meji worked at a variety of jobs. He was, variously, a carpet salesman, prawn fisherman, nightclub doorman, and an electrician. He eventually became a bailiff. He went to jail after being involved in a fight in Perth, as well as for drug offenses. In 2006 he was 35 years old and living in Queensland. After he's out of jail he decided to find a job, and get a new life, to forget his bad deeds in the past. In January 2006 Meji had been offered work in a government department in Port Hedland, Western Australia. He accepted the job, and set off on the long drive, which he had made multiple times before, Driving a 2001 Mitsubishi Challenger he took the Bunting Highway, which for much of his journey was a desert track across the outback of the Northern Territory. Three men sitting on the roadside, who had run out of petrol, and that he had offered to give one of them a lift to a petrol station. Meji also posited that he could have been stabbed with a drugged syringe during a struggle. Either way, Meji later recalled feeling increasingly, dazed and confused, and then blacked out before he recovered consciousness hours later. He also said that his attackers did not leave him immediately. They overpowered and stunned him. He later awoke in their camp. They had a gun, wrote Meji, but never used it. They did bring him water. After an unknown period, the carjackers lifted camp and disappeared. Before they left, they stole his shoes, but left him with $12.30 which had been in his pocket. Meji's hardy constitution, his chances of survival were, with hindsight, actually relatively good. However, it was never clearly established precisely how Meji became as lost as he did. Meji said that he survived by eating leeches, insects, snakes, ants and lizards, and edible plants. He drank water from various dams and waterholes, and scavenged in the bush every evening, eating only one meal a day, just enough to stay alive. When water was unavailable, he drank his urine after chilling it to suppress the flavor. Meji, baked in the day and frozen at night, created temporary shelters from the sun out of old branches, and eventually found a decrepit windmill. Meji said that he made a little humpy out of a feed trough that was at some cattle yards, obviously a mustering point, I thought to myself, so I've dragged it up on top of the dam, flipped it over and dug a hole and just lived in there for 10 weeks. Meji became dangerously weak, to the extent that he was unable to travel as far on his daily foraging expeditions. At one point he suffered an abscess of the tooth that, weakened as he was, could have been fatal and which he prized out of his mouth with his car keys. Meji was eventually discovered about 50 kilometers of Burindudu Station, southwest of Catherine, Northern Territory. His rescuers were local station hands and their trainees, known as Jackaroos. By now, Meji was starving, sunburnt, and suffering from malnutrition and exposure. Burindudu Station Manager, Mark Clifford, described Meji as just a walking skeleton when he was brought to the station, and said that the area he was found in was one of the most isolated places in Australia. On April 5, 2006, Meji was flown to the Royal Darwin Hospital, where medical staff described him as emaciated, but well hydrated. While in Darwin Hospital, Meji was interviewed by Northern Territory Police, 
although they dismissed suggestions that there was any question of criminal activity on Meji's part. Indeed, they said they were unable to find any evidence of criminality at all, or even Meji's stolen car. Meji discharged himself from hospital after six days, and continue her life until now. I hope you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe, also leave a comment. Have a great day, and see you in the next video.